Hello, hope everyone's doing good today. And today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of a pen that is not mine. So it's a pen which I've actually bought from my wife. And I have bought this from missingpen.de from Mr. Rolf Thiel. Hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. So it's all the way from Germany and uh, Mr. Thiel has kindly given me his uh, contact details uh, as part of the packaging. He has also given me like a thank you um, for his eBay store um, and some cards. Maybe you can try scanning this where you can get 10% off your first purchase from his store. So I'm just gonna leave that aside and he's also given me um, nicely a, a Haribo uh, suite which will come in handy and as you probably would know from looking at the title of the video I bought a Visconti for my wife and the model in question is actually the impressionist uh, Van Gogh uh, model uh, called Orchard in Blossom it's nothing much um, as far as the box is concerned. The usual uh, cardboard sleeve. And then you get the artist himself, the great man. Or at least a uh, very nice uh, print. And then when we open up the box, which is just made of cardboard with a kind of a linen-like texture, you get uh, I presume this is a bookmark. You get the pen, which we'll take a look at later. But more importantly, you get an international warranty. Um, not sure why it's not stamped, but basically it's a, it's a guarantee against defect. And it doesn't really say how long the warranty is for. I presume it's actually for, for life, I'm not sure. And the pen, I'm just going to see whether there's anything else in the packaging. It's in there pretty tight, so I don't think there is. So I'm going to take the pen out of the sleeve. And we'll take a look at the pen, right? I will do a, a writing sample in the subsequent video. But uh, looking at the pen itself, as you can tell, um, the Van Gogh or the Van Gogh uh, series of pens by Visconti have lots and lots of finishes. This is actually the Orchard in Blossom, which is a limited edition, which they release, if I'm not wrong, in 2019 uh, in some markets. And what sets it apart from the other pens, uh, as far as my casual brow browsing is con kind of concerned, is that it has a rose gold uh, I'm not sure, I, I'm pretty sure it's not real rose gold, but it has a rose gold plating. Um, you see the, the logo of Visconti up there. You get the, the clip, which is nice and springy. It's in a kind of an arch shape, uh, a bridge. You get the cap band, which says um, Van Gogh. Visconti Italy and I'm not sure I think it's a might be doing something wrong yet yeah, it's actually a slip cap or magnetic cap there's you can feel the magnet kind of holding the cap down so opening it up the cap is you know it's it has a bit of heft to it not too much and you can see the tiny screw in there. I'm not sure whether you can make it out. You get the pen. Uh, the body is very nicely made as well as the cap in these uh, facets, right? So it's, it's not very obvious sometimes when you look at pens off the website that uh, the pen is actually has lots and lots of facets, facets down here. I'm not sure how many there are. Um, and uh, you get a little end cap down here which is also rose gold plated you open up the, the body of the pen 
which is which has metal threads that's nice uh, the, the body is pretty light not sure what material this is probably some form of acrylic or resin it has these nice swirly patterns down here and the section is metal right again rose gold plated all the way comes with a converter from Visconti looks like kind of a generic converter or international converter um, and putting the pen back because of course this pen doesn't belong to me you get the metal section decent size section and holding the pen in the hand it is kind of decently balanced um, the balance of the pen is actually towards the front which is kind of unusual you know, typically lots of times you get uh, the balance on the back of the pen but this one is slightly towards the front because of the metal section down here the section is pretty comfortable and then you get the nib so looking at the nib um, it's trying to make it out it says Visconti uh, the words are too small I think it says Firenze which could be the city uh, that Visconti makes their pens and it's a fine that I bought from from uh, missing pen uh, you see the feet and that's pretty much it uh, pen wise so it's a nice pen um, design wise it's it's kind of it has to be nice because this pen isn't cheap right um, it's it's in like the 200 uh, euro over price bracket and for a stainless steel uh, nib right you know they have to add all these features to kind of make the pen um, price uh, kind of justify the price rather so I'm going to ink this pen up and do a writing sample um, and I will post that up okay it's actually been quite a while since I did the unboxing till when I'm doing this writing sample um, some thoughts about the pen before I, I start writing my wife has been using this pen for for the last few months and um, some interesting things to note I mean the pen is actually coated in with a sort of uh, like a film right so if you see down here the, it, the pen kind of sheds film um, it's been doing that all across the pen uh, the finish of the pen as you can see I just scraped off some of that um, that's one thing that I have been noticing so even down here you can probably can make up some of this uh, flaky stuff that's coming out the other thing to take note of is um, the pen has generally been well behaved uh, in, ter in terms of the nib there is a little bit of tarnishing on the gold plated nib as you can see down here the other thing to take note of is the feet of the pen is not the most elegant design um, if you you know sometimes the pen might burp out ink and ink would come up in blobs uh, due to the way that the the feet is designed it's not an actual feet with fins that hold ink right so it's it's a very kind of a straight through type design so two things to kind of take note of so now um, to the writing sample um, I don't use this pen very often like I mentioned it's not my pen uh, but when I use it I would prefer to post the pen right for the for the greater balance that it provides
So the nib of the pen, it's it has a little bit of a sandy feeling. Uh, I don't think Visconti actually did a, like a whole bunch of polishing to make it ultra smooth, but in terms of um, it behaving, it's actually a well behaved nib, right? If you kind of uh, ink it up properly, there isn't the greatest amount of line variation because it is a steel nib and it's pretty stiff. Um, but it's not the smoothest rider out there if you're expecting something like that. Uh, in terms of the line width, it is pretty a pretty decent fine. I mean, you can actually use this for, um, I believe this is a, a six millimeter uh, line width and it will work well if you have kind of a medium uh, medium to large handwriting size. So some closing thoughts about this pen. Um, I think the, the reason to get this pen is, is primarily because of the looks. Uh, not very often that you get a rose gold uh, finish on the pen. It's kind of a rare thing. And of course this nice resin uh, you know, down here, uh, kind of help things helps helps things move moving along. If you're deciding to buy this pen, uh, in terms of price, I'm not sure whether I mentioned that earlier on. You still can get this version of uh, Van Gogh um, for about 270 US dollars. Um, of course, you can always shop around and get better deals. And at that price, I would say that. You're buying this pen primarily for the looks, for the design. I mean, all things Visconti with the, you know, the, the bridge style clip. Um, and in terms of the nib performance, I would say it's satisfactory. However, it, it's not, it's probably not one of the best, better nibs out there. So I hope you enjoyed um, the video today. Let me know what you think. Um, if any questions, please post them in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.